So today I'm going to swerve back into a lane that I used to be in, which was Wall Street, because um, I find it I find it uh, fascinating that people people don't quite understand what the real problem in this country is. And I've been screaming from the rooftops, not alone, with, but with all of you, screaming from the rooftops that the economy, it's the economy, it's the economy, it's the economy, it's the economy, stupid, it's not social issues, right? And that the oligarchy has a firm grip on our politics. They've paid off all the politicians for tax breaks for for, uh, for a million reasons, all, all the little favors, right? But what is what is the consequence of that? What is the consequence of corporations not paying tax, right? Corporations uh, not reciprocating, not trickling down the money, hoarding the money, right? What is the consequence of that? What the consequence of that is in our country, we have a decrease, the most important number, right? All the other numbers are all gibberish and bullshit. The most important number to know as a, as a United States citizen, as a, as a pedestrian, as a tax-paying American, a fair, honest tax-paying American, is velocity of money. See, when money is changing hands, right, I'll say it again, velocity of money. I'm going to show a clip, right, and we're gonna, we'll watch it together, and then I'm going to comment. Now, this, is by, this clip is by Elliott Wave, which is a, um, a, a technical analyst firm on Wall Street. They're pretty good. And you'll, you'll hear some, some interesting facts in there. Um, but uh, most of all, I wanna, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll play a little bit, and then I'm going to comment, because a lot of it is not quite accurate. So let, let's have a look at this, and then, and then I'll, I'll chirp. Money back. velocity, what the latest numbers tell you. I'm Bob Stokes with Elliott Wave International. The U.S. GDP has shown steady annual improvement since 2010, but there may be a big red flag. Money velocity, or the rate at which money is changing hands, has experienced an alarming slowdown. Our Elliott Wave theorist noted this back in May 2014. Money velocity has been making new lows quarter after quarter since the third quarter of 2010. Here's an update. The rate at which money is changing hands on the U.S. economy now is even slower than it was in 2014. The problem is money velocity in the U.S., as measured by M2, has fallen to a record low of 1.44, meaning every dollar spent circulates only 1.44 times in the economy, down from over two times at the peak in 1997. So right there, that's the big number right there. You see money velocity right? The, the rate at which money changes hands is at a record low, right? Now, why is that? Why, why is that even important? When money, when money is changing hands, like, like, like I, I, I make some money and I pay my bills and I have all this extra money to, to go and spend, right? It, it stimulates, it's a stimulating effect on the economy and people prosper. They also take vacations. They, 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 uh, they're, they're in a better uh, better mental and physical state. It's a healthier, healthier people, healthier economy. Now, the, the reason why it stalls is because people hoard money. That's the big, that's the big one. But now that you've seen the chart that we're at a record low in, 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 um, in the velocity of money, it's, it's now lower than it was throughout the sixties and the seventies and the fifties. It skyrocketed in the nineties. And then and now we're in a we're in a free fall, right? According to the chart. If you want, roll the chart, roll the roll the video back and 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 uh, look at the chart. Also, you might want to watch this video maybe twice or three times. This is very important. So let's let's continue with Elliott Wave's analysis of the markets. Why is money velocity so low? This is from an article the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis published two years ago. During the first and second quarters of 2014, the velocity of the monetary base was at 4.4, its slowest pace on record. This implies that the unprecedented monetary base increase driven by the Fed's large money injections through its large-scale asset purchase programs has failed to cause at least a one-for-one -one proportional increase in nominal GDP. So that was a mouthful, right? Now, it, it seems like a lot of big words and it doesn't make sense, but let's break it down. 
What he's saying is it implies that unprecedented money base increase driven by the Fed's large money injections through its large scale asset purchasing program. What the hell does that mean? It means this, right? That was the TARP program in 2008 when the banks froze and, 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 and Goldman Sachs, you know, attacked. Lehman Brothers and drove them out of business and almost sunk Bear Stearns and and took over the economy, right? Took over the market economy. And they bailed out Citibank and JP Morgan made millions, right? The TARP money, they took $700 billion and bailed out the bank so there was liquidity, right? Now, the idea was that that large money injection, right, through these large as he says, large-scale asset purchase programs failed to cause at least a one-to-one -one proportional increase in GDP, right? It, it means it had no effect, right? All of that TARP money injection into the economy, all that government spending had no effect on the, on the real economy. Why? Why? Because it didn't have an effect on, on, on the velocity of money. Money wasn't changing hands. Why? Because people were hoarding the money. Now, is it people hoarding the money? No. That's the lie right there. Right? So let's continue. And I want to make, I'll make that point a little clearer for you. Uh, but let's, let's continue to watch this video because it's, it's a lot of facts in there that are very important that I, I'm not eloquent or, you know, enough to state. So let's keep watching. So why did the monetary base increase not cause a proportionate increase in either the general price level or GDP? The answer lies in the private sector's dramatic increase in their willingness to hoard money instead of spend it. See, now that's the big lie right there. That's the big Wall Street lie. It might have been true. Or in theory, that's what it's supposed to be, that it's the, it's the private sector's willingness to not spend money out of fear that they're not going to have any money into the future, right? It's fear of spending money because they see that the economy gets unstable and people don't spend money, right? That's the, that's the theory. And to some degree, it was true in 2009, 2010. Most people still had some of their life savings. They had some of their their properties that weren't garnished and, and such, right? People still had some money and some view that, oh, I'm going to save my money until the, the storm is, uh, is blow, you know, passes over. But the storm never passed, right? So all of that, all of those tax breaks, right? And all that money injection was given to corporations, the very people, the very criminals that sunk the economy. The, the, the logic was to give them money and and unfreeze the banks and that that will stimulate the economy and somehow but you you can't give money grabbers and you can't give the thieves of wall street the corporations that all they care about is money that they don't care about the social ramification of their actions all they care about is profit right you can't entrust those types of people with the honest man's money right it doesn't work right we see that it doesn't work so what you actually had was not the consumer, not the the the, uh, the the private sector hoarding their money, but the banks were hoarding their money. They weren't they weren't reciprocating, right? They were not only not reciprocating, but they weren't they weren't paying tax, right? They somehow rigged the you know the the taxation laws that they pay no tax at all, and meanwhile they're paying politicians off through the money that the taxpayers were giving them. Through that TARP money, people like Nancy Pelosi ended up with $100 million in the bank and Barney Frank and, and all of them, Schumer, they all made tons and tons of money, right? All the Republican, you know, senators and congressmen, Mitch McConnell, they're so fucking, they got so rich, right? Just shut the fuck up. Don't talk about it, right? So, so that's, that's where the TARP money went, right? Occupy Wall Street, the guys, you guys were right, right? You guys are still right, right? See, it doesn't have anything to do with social issues, right? It doesn't have to do with anything of skin color or what bathroom you use or your sexual preference or your, your sexual orientation or whatever. Fuck, nobody cares about that, right? Nobody cares about woman, male, female, black, white, Spanish, blah, blah, blah. Uh, to some degree, immigration probably is, a, is, a, is an issue, I'm starting to to change on my my opinion of that. <clears throat> well, I think that 
legal immigration is is good, but the, this this constant flood of immigrants into our country who don't understand and or respect the Constitution of the United States of America that don't all they all a lot of them look this is the fact right you might not want to hear this but a lot of immigrants come into the country and they see America as a cash cow you know place to work and 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 they work hard and they become doctors and lawyers and not just pot scrubbers in the restaurant they actually prosper in business and take their money and go back to you know wherever they're from India or you know parts of Africa and make you know and live like kings they live way better lives than they they could possibly have lived here right so so that is true but but the fact is that people in America for you know six you know one out of six people should not be on food stamps the minimum wage people should not be working a full-time job and still be going down to the to the welfare office to get you know to to get their, their you know their 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 rent uh, the rent arrears corrected and, and it, you know, people should not be living like this, right? Object poverty where people can't travel from one place to the other. They can't take time off. This is object poverty. This is the result. This is called depression, right? It's not even a recession anymore where all the, that huge transfer of wealth that occurred in 2008 and was given to the top 1%, the corporations, Right. Right to to all these you know this top one percent when that money transferred, it 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 hammered the velocity of money right and so people are living in object poverty. They're bombarded with false false narratives like the bullshit Russia story right. You've got Zuckerberg talking now. Now Facebook is fully on board with the Russia story. You have fake elections. Everything is designed. To, to make you not realize that the 1% of this country makes 45 times what the, the remainder 99% of the population makes, right? It's it, the staggering, staggering wealth and income inequality is the real problem in America. And the answer is in, is in the stock market, the price of oil, the price of gold, commodities, how commodities trade. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand the velocity of money. When you only have four hundred dollars to your name, like sixty percent of the American population, right? Walk, that, that's the fact that came out at uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, town hall. That sixty percent of Americans don't have four hundred dollars to their name. It's just it's a fucking what the fuck happened? That's not why my grandparents, you know, my grandfathers and and their uncles and my uncles, you know, fought in World War Two under you know under Eisenhower and. You know, and Truman, and before that, they came out of the Great Depression and the, the New Deal. They, you know, they died. You know, people fought and died for that, for for the for the for American prosperity. And now we have an oligarchy stealing it from us, right? The real traitors are the people that support the corporations that don't have any allegiance to our country. The major shareholders that are not American firms at all. A lot of them are Saudi. A lot of them are. They're, they're, they're Japanese investors, they're African investors, they're Egyptian, they're from all over the world, right? All the, the, the all European filthy rich oligarchs, the, even Russian oligarchs, all the people that, that hold the treasury and they hold the, the, the treasury bonds and the, and, and, and the equity markets and the, the oil interests, the people that hold the United States by the balls and control it, they're not going away. They're, they're not going to give it up. You think, you know, picket sign, oh, vote for Bernie, is that's 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 enough? No, it's it's they they came at Bernie Sanders full throat. Full throat. Why? Because because this is what they're protecting. Bernie Sanders, his message, maybe not the man, but the message represented an end to the oligarchy. That was his campaign pitch. It wasn't about you know the the minority communities want it to be about black issues and 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 gay issues and women's issues and pussy pink cat issues but the real issue was what bernie had his finger on right and 40 million people came around him and cheered him on so let's watch the rest of the video i know i, I went a lot i went on but it's very important velocity of money let's get back to the subject all right let's go this only confirms what Conquer the Crash has said all along. The Fed is powerless against deflation, and the change in consumer behavior from spending to hoarding, as reflected by the falling velocity of money, is the psychology of deflation in action.
Of course, there is also an issue of debt. The same January 18th Bloomberg article notes, when debt is at high levels and increasingly counterproductive, the most important lesson of economic history is that the velocity of money falls, said a legendary bond manager. As the economy grew over the past seven or eight years, so did the debt, says CNSNews.com. On January 20th, 2009, the federal debt was $10.6 trillion. As of the close of business, January 18th, 2017, it was $19.9 trillion. If the tanking velocity of money is a sign of a growing financial conservatism, it would only make the next economic downturn that much more dangerous. So that's enough from Elliot Wave. But the things that the things that would that they were just talking about is that the, the key word is deflation. It's not inflation, it's deflation where prices actually drop because the velocity of money drops. People don't have money to spend. So the, you know, the, the corporations have no other choice but to lower the price a little bit, right? They don't have rents come down a little bit, right? The housing market comes down a little bit. It's deflation, right? And the lie, right? Is, and there's also debt. They talked about debt. When people are in debt, they, they don't, it's not that they, they stop spending money. They can't. They don't, they're, they're in debt, right? And that, that adds to the decrease in velocity of money, right? And it also adds, you know, this tanking velocity of money. It also adds to, to the, um, to deflation, right? So what is the what is this what is the government doing about it? What do they do? Instead, they 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 make student loans unsquashable in 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 any court in the, in the land, right? That's the one loan in the world, the student loan that you cannot get out of, right? So they and they keep piling on interest on top of interest on top of interest. They keep piling. The banks now own so many so many. There's a million empty homes in America, right? And what do they do? They just they, they don't they don't reciprocate. The corporations don't reciprocate, right? We have to you have to understand that it's not it's not the 33 million people anymore in the in the in the country that are causing this deflation, right? It's the corporations that don't reciprocate. They hoard the money. They take the tax money that's supposed to hit the real economy and they bring it offshore. They they outsource the jobs right and get it cheaper right that's what's going on right it's you they've legalized bribery right the money flows into washington the the the, the lobbyists go down to washington they buy off the politicians and they get laws that make all of this possible and exacerbate the problem right they don't care about social issues again george soros said it right they they don't invest for the sake of social issue. They invest for the sake of making their own profit. And that has not changed. That is the corporate scenario, right? That's what 8,000, 10,000 corporations that operate in the United States do. So, right? So, so what, what again, what's the solution? They, you know, Trump said, oh, you're going to give, we're going to give tax breaks to corporations and they're going to, you know, they're going to do, they're going to do the right thing by the people. No, they don't. Right. So you cut their tax rate from 34 to 14, 34 to 20, you cut it by 14 percent. But it has absolutely no effect on the real economy, mostly because they don't reciprocate. Right. They're not going to give it back. Right. They don't do that. Right. That's not what corporations do. Right. So I, I hope that's I hope that that makes sense. Right. That the velocity of money is the is the is the is the is the key is the key to the solution, right? So again, it nothing changes. Now that you understand that, right? Now that you understand that, the problem is still the same. The military industrial complex keeps the oligarchy in power, right? They they have this vision of a new world order where they, they go to Syria and they and it's Russia and, and US and China and Israel. Everybody's trying to get a piece of Syria. So that it's it's a real estate fight. It's a it's a rich man's chess game so that that they, you can control commodities there. You can control people. You can put a Starbucks in there and a McDonald's and a you know and Boeing can sell a couple of bombs in there. It's business, right? That's what the that's what the insurgency wars are about, business, right? And the only way you can expand like that is through the military. So again, military people defect. You're 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 hurting the country by signing up to the military 
and, and go and fighting these senseless wars. In terms of the debt, don't pay the debt, right? If all this is risky because this is now civil disobedience, right? If people came together and decided that we were not going to pay, that we refuse to pay these student loans, that we refuse to pay tax, right? Until the situation changes, right? Until there are term limits where the the the, the the corrupt politicians are not allowed to stay there for 28 years and 30 years, right? Two years, get out. If you take money, go to jail, right? You either do the, do the work of the people or you go to jail, right? Which one do you want to do, right? And you, you'll weed out a lot of the criminals by doing that. Term limits, you got to make bribery illegal again and you have to prosecute it. You have to make tax evasion illegal again and you have to prosecute it, okay? That's, that's the way we go, so... I hope that's helpful. My name is Marcus Conti. I'm an investigative journalist, a former Wall Street stockbroker, Series 7 and 63. <laughs> a former, you know, equity trader. Okay, so um, I hope that's helpful. helpful. Peace out.